All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my second stream. Uh, hopefully everything's going okay. Make sure everyone can hear me. Hey, Alex in the chat. Noah plays in the chat. Matt's in the chat. We're all good to go there. Uh, let's do this. So uh, I don't know if everyone listened to my first stream or watched my first stream or watched the recap or whatever. So I'm just going to go quickly through what we did. Uh, here's a little to-do list that I had. We set up a Git repo and initiated a Vue.js project, which was kind of an epic fail. Um, didn't really go to, as to plan like most projects do. Had issues with permissions. So that took like half an hour to get through. But once we did that, we kind of stepped through the rest of this checklist pretty easily. Uh, found an API, which was Dungeons & Dragons. Went through and did some fetching in Vue. Did some, gr created a simple grid layout, had a little search bar there, showed some boxes with the API data and implemented a search. So let me just pull that up for you right now to see what we've got to start with. Uh, as you can see here, we're looking at a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons monsters all kind of displayed like this. Not the greatest looking thing ever, but it serves its purpose. Um, if you take a look, we've also implemented a search. So if I start typing in dragon it'll show us all the dragons instantaneously that was kind of the biggest point of last the last stream i wanted to show you how to implement that kind of search functionality in vue.js it's pretty cool because of how quickly you can search and the other cool function about it and something that i want to get to today is being able to search multiple fields so right now we're only really displaying one thing which is the name of the monster but we could be displaying something like attributes of the monster. We could be displaying something like type of monster, stuff like that. So there's a lot that this um, API gives us. And we just want to get through and kind of display a few more things in these boxes. So let me just show you the next to-do list that we're going to be trying to get through today. I'm not going to guarantee that we're going to get through all of it, uh, depending, because I'm not going to be streaming for too, too long. But for sure, we'll try to get through some. So let me check the chat now. Uh, yeah, no problem, Alex. Uh, I don't think we plan on doing any music during our, you know, starting soon stream because that annoys me as well. But maybe we'll do like an intro to the stream at some point. I don't know about that because we, we do like our intros. I don't know if you've ever listened to our podcast, but we just actually did a brand new intro to the podcast. So... Um, yeah, we might be implementing something like that for the stream at some point, but definitely, I don't think not in the starting soon because what's the, like, you can listen to your own music. You have your own stuff to do. And yeah, during the stream, I'm probably not going to play any music either. I don't understand that aspect of a stream as well. Like, why are you listening to a streamer listen to music and talk over it awkwardly? That's also weird. So I don't know. Maybe matt can chime in if we want to do that or not but i, I don't think we're going to be playing music during before or after the stream uh all right so let's go through this to-do list real quick uh so first thing we're going to do is we want to display some more attributes for the monster in the monster tile then we want to actually expand the monster tile and i have an interesting idea for this i don't know how it's going to work because i'm not very uh front-end heavy. Uh, I don't do too much CSS animations or anything like that, but what I wanted to do is um, show you on here. What I want to technically do is kind of when you click on one of these monsters, I wanted to expand out and, you know, show like the light box from, show a light box or like a, you know, a separated div on top of everything from wherever you click. So if I'm going to be clicking here, I want this, you know, box to expand out and cover the entire you know, certain area of the screen so that it's contextually expanding. That's kind of how I'm going to go with it. I want to try to do that if I can. I, we'll see. But yeah, this journey will kind of go on today. One of the things. Uh, the other thing I want to do is add more attributes to the instant search. So like I was saying before, this inter interesting search right here. So if I, you know, start typing here, ancient um if I start typing ancient, you can see it brings up all the ancient monsters. I wanted to search by not just one field, not just name. I want to be able to, you know, type ancient, then space, like, uh, the type of monster that you want, like, you know, dragon or something. And I wanted to actually go through and give us all the ancient dragons or something like that. But it, it, it's more compl complex than that. And we'll, we'll take a look at quickly at the API and see what we need to do. So let's get through let's get going right now let's take a look at the api that's the first thing that i want to do 
So in app.view, what do we got here? We got the API right here. So sometimes uh, I like to use a thing called a uh, tool called Postman, which kind of makes this a little bit prettier to look at the API. Also, sometimes uh, Chrome does create a little bit of a better layout for JSON. So I don't know why it's going, what, what's going on here, but uh, I wonder if we can solve that somehow. Like, can we just do like a monsters.json? No, that's definitely crazy. Yeah, it's still not gonna do it. Anyway, I'll, I'll figure out a way to show it uh, a little bit better. So is this front end or back end? So this is gonna be mostly front end and I'm gonna be interfacing with a API. So the API is this DND API dot co monsters um, and they have a lot like they don't they don't just have monsters I can take I can show you they have quite a bit and it's all open and free from from what I understand like I'm not planning on making any money for this so I'm not too worried about the licensing but uh, essentially what you can do is you can type in whatever into this D and D like you can type in classes right and it'll give you all the classes of, of, of whatever you're looking at and you can type in monsters adult dragon which is actually a great way to do it right now. That's what we want to do. So this is kind of what we're going to be looking through right now. So this is all the information that each monster has within its object. So what do we want to display? That's the question. So alignment of monsters, is that important? Uh, I'm, I'm, I have done a f like one or two D&D &D campaigns, but it was really short ones and I'm not an expert. So I don't know exactly what to display. That's where I will need either audience participation in this, like tell me, or I'm just going to guess a few things. And then actually in the next stream, what I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on having a couple friends come on that do a lot of D&D. &D, and I want to get feedback from them once I have something to show. So once this is in a little bit of a better state, once I have something to show, I want to get feedback from them. What would help them during like a DMing, like a dungeon master session? Because I can see this being a little bit helpful and I don't know if the tools like this exist. I'm sure they do. But the big, the big thing for me is like if they were, if they quickly needed a monster lookup, this is a lot faster than, you know, going through the D&D database, finding the monster, like scrolling through or even typing in a search and typing in the full name or half name of the monster and pressing search. What they could do here is literally write, okay, I need a dragon real quick and type in dragon and it'll give them all the dragons in the, in the monster database. So I can see that being useful for them. So that's kind of the approach that I'm gonna take when I'm presenting them this idea. And I wanna get feedback from them being like, is this useful, is this not useful? What do you need to make it actually useful for you? And we're gonna take their feedback and then implement it into, into the app in that stage. And we're gonna show you kind of how to take user feedback at a very early design level and use it to better your app really quickly. Because a lot of the time when a designer or a developer go in and try to create an app from their own head, like their own idea, something that they wanna do, uh, they get stuck on this thing where they wanna make everything super perfect before they wanna show anyone. And I find that that is a bad idea. Like what you wanna do is you wanna get something showable. Like you don't wanna show them this. This is a little bit too basic. Uh, there's not much to show. I, that's why I didn't wanna bring them on in this one. I wanted to do the next one. So. I want to get a little more information here, but once I do get that information, even if it's wrong, like even if it's not the best information that I could be displaying, it's enough for me to be like, okay, here's the idea, here's the concept, here's how it's going to work. Let's go through it and hopefully you can f give me feedback while we're doing that and I can take your feedback and almost instantly implement, implement some of the changes. And then f like some of the changes that are more complex, I can push back on. And we can have that discussion and you can you can be part of it because I'm going to definitely uh, stream that whole experience in the next live stream. So stay tuned for that. But for now, let's take a look at what we want to display for each of these monsters. So let's take a look. I think type is a really important one. So I'm definitely going to be displaying type. Uh, that's usually the kind of thing that, you know, a, it is important to a D and D dungeon master. Like they need to know what kind of type of monster. And sometimes the, what I want to do is I want to be able to search by type as well. So not only search by the name, I want to be able to search by type. And then the other thing I want to search by is potentially these attributes. And I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. It would be cool for me to be able to search by attributes somehow, but I, I can't I, like in my head, I can't really figure that out. But, um, 
Let me just uh, check the chat here. One question, see if I was to make forms, would that be backend like using PHP databases for sign up and login? And then if a person makes a new topic, so basically every piece of information to a database. Yeah, in a form kind of system, uh, when, you're, when you're creating a form that is typically backend heavy information, like most of the data in the form will be stored in the backend, all the user information will be stored in the backend, and you're right, all of that will be stored in some sort of database whether that be SQL, MongoDB, Postgres, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's PHP, it, you can do Node, you can, it, there's so many different variations of it. There's fully headless CMSs that you can probably use to accelerate your development. Something like Sanity.io jumps to mind because I've used it recently. Um, I know Statamic is something that was suggested to me just like a little while ago. Uh, it's a little bit expensive to get started with. I think it's $200 per project, but it's a one-time fee. I, I don't know if that helps you because you're probably just kind of getting ideas for how to create something. On the other side, there might be already created form generators or form CMSs that have the form already done for you. And all you have to do is kind of stand it up on your own. Um, it might be a similar experience, kind of like two Wix or Squarespace where you don't have to do much coding. You don't have to worry about the back end or the front end. It's just like, you have to kind of moderate the form and create the form that you need. Uh, I don't know any of those services off the top of my head, but I definitely look at like something like, um, you know, uh, open, open source form forums you can do in PHP or whatever. And I would, I would kind of look through and see some of these and see if you can find something that fits your project and maybe it's something that can accelerate your development where you don't have to build it from scratch. But with that being said, uh, let's move on now to the actual task at hand. Choo -choo -choo. So what, okay, so the first thing I need to do, I've kind of figured out that I'm definitely gonna be displaying type. Um, I want to display these attributes. I'll probably be displaying them in the more details dialogue so the the dialogue that happens when you actually click on this the other thing that i really want to do is display images but i haven't found a way to do that because these uh responses this this api doesn't come back with images unfortunately so let me take a look here let's uh let's, there's actions piercing damage yeah, yeah so that's about it we really don't have that much to display like we can we can display alignment Type, subtype, size, maybe maybe these four to start off. Uh, yeah, let's let's display these four inside of this box. That's what we're gonna do. All right, let's go back to the code. So, what that will require is a little bit more in depth. Uh, yeah, we could grab a, a generic picture per type to start with, but um, I'll definitely take a look. Uh, yeah, Noah, you're definitely right trying to make a form on my own and obviously it will be harder, but it will be a, such a big learning experience for me. Yeah, exactly. So if you're, if you're in it for the learning, yes, uh, that is a hundred percent right. Like it, it will be a lot of, a lot of learning and a lot of in-depth coding. So you'll learn a lot and you'll have something to show on your portfolio. So it's not a bad idea, uh, to kind of get into it and learn to learn to do all the little pieces of it but be prepared for it to be a little bit of a slog try to think of something that's a really simple like a, a really good mvp for the project like most viable product or minimum minimum viable product so that you can actually get something at least started and you're not stuck in the weeds of like just you know just getting the the project spun up that that's my suggestion is try to think of something a really a really accomplishable task for you in your current state of like uh, education or experience in development and start from there with a good base. All I have made is portal pages. I mean, portal pages is still a thing where you kind of have to go through and figure out how to, you know, put something out there, uh, get, get something go, get something going like ho hosting wise, or even like local hosting. It's still a stepping stone. So the, it, the next step isn't making an entire functional form in my opinion. But the next step can be a part of the form. So like maybe just focus on the front end of the form. Maybe make it something that like, you know, resembles a form in some way and just get get that part out of the way and then take a look at the back end after. Try to make it so that's manageable. You're not, again, you're not going to put yourself in some sort of situation where you're not motivated to keep going. 
that's the risk that you run if you tackle too complex, too complex of a project right from the get-go. But again, if you're willing to kind of go into the weeds, there's nothing better than taking a project like a form or like a big, you know, back-end, front-end combination, like a to-do list even, and going through the steps and learning every single step and then making a final product. There is no better learning experience and there's nothing better to show on your uh, portfolio than that. But, all right, so the thing with this API is it doesn't actually return monsters with all their information. It returns monsters with their link to the their detailed information. So what we have to do is we have to actually run another axios.get function within the response within the response section so once we get the response so once we get the basic response we have to um, loop through the results and create a another array of objects that has more detailed responses for each and every one of the monsters so we can kind of separate that out now i'm just trying to think what the best way to do this and I, people can chime in if they're if they're in the chat or not. But what I'm thinking is we're gonna have a separate API, a separate uh, variable here that's just gonna contain the basic information of the monsters, so that it's easy to search. Now that I'm thinking about it, because I wanted to search more stuff. So you know what? No, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make each and every monster hold all of its own information right from the get go. It's not that much information. It's just text information. I don't think it's gonna be too much of a performance hindrance. So let's do that. Let's see, load details only on click at one monster. Wait, that's bad. You want to search, exactly. I wanna search more of the attributes. Now, the smart thing to do would be, yeah, and I can't, there's, not, there's nothing I can do that would not make me have to go through each and every monster and get all of its attributes, unfortunately. Like the, the, the better system, if I were to do this in production, I would take this API and I would create my own API on a backend. So what I would do is I would, whatever like core information I need from a monster, I would generate that myself on a backend and create my own API. And when I ping my own API, it'll only give me that core information for each monster. So then I don't have to get all the information for no reason stored in. And then what, like, like you said, when I click on that monster, uh, it'll then generate, generate another call to my API, which will give me all the rest of the information. So if I was doing this in a production environment where I worried about all the performance aspects of like low end networks, low end computers, that's the way I would approach it. Right now, I'm not going to attempt to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to create a, you know, a mass, a, a big master array full of big monster objects. And that's kind of a pun, I guess. The objects are monsters. And they're going to be big, so they're kind of monster objects. So yeah, uh, let's see how that's going to go for us. But first, got to wrap my head around it a little bit. So what when we get to the results, what do we get? We get, let's go back here. We need to get the monsters API. Submit. So we get a URL. That's what we need. So this URL is the, is the thing that we're going to be calling for everyone. So... Since this D and D response is already an array, we can actually run a for each on it. So this dot D and D response dot for each, and that should give us gives us a thing. So for each element, what we want to do is we want to run another Axios request. So uh, what we want to do is. First of all, let's separate this out a little bit. Let's create a little bit of a better structure here. Base URL is this. Okay. And with that base URL, now we don't actually need to write all this. We can just write this dot base URL plus concatenation for the win. Uh, you know what? I'm going to actually get rid of that and put the slashes in here because that's kind of the way I roll. Now, if we keep going here, so now that we have a base URL, what we can do is for each element, this, um, we're going to have to do another axios.get call. axios.get 
this dot base URL plus does it return monsters? It returns API. So not only does it return monsters, it returns API. So what we have to do here is actually write API like this. And again, uh, that's something that will have to be will have to be driven. So it does return a slash API. So yeah, that's what we're gonna have to do. So then probably should do a four of which is async. We probably should do a four of which is async. Can you expand on that, Alex? What, what is that? What, what are you trying to imply? A for, for of loop, I mean? Okay, for of loop. Uh, yeah, we could. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the for each for now. Uh, the for of would be kind of cool because what you're saying is it's async. So actually, let me, you know what? I'm going to listen to you for a second here. For of JS. I want to take a look at this for of loop. Const element, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, including built in string arguments and user set and invokes iteration hooks with statements to be executed for the value of each distinct property. This is interesting. So you're saying that the for of loop, as opposed to the for each loop, is, is asynchronous. So it'll run regardless in the background for me. So that's kind of cool. I mean, sure. I guess. Yeah, I mean, we could if you want. <laughs> All right, let me let me let me just write it as a for of loop. So for uh, const monster. Was it of this dot d and d response? Is that, is that right? Yeah. Just like that. And then again, so axios dot get this dot base URL plus monster dot URL. Right. And then a dot then dot then uh, res equals that wait for of is bad because you want to fetch all in parallel <laughs> uh yeah i mean again it doesn't really matter you're right no, no no it's all good it's all good alex you're you're right it like doing it asynchronous would be the ideal but again we're we're trying to kind of get through this. This isn't production, and if and if even if we did decide to do it in production, we could always refactor this to be a little bit more efficient if we need to. It depends the it depends what the target audience is. Like if we're targeting people that have very bad internet connections, very low end devices, I'm 100% in agreement with you. We do the most optimal, like the most optimal things out there. Like we do, you know, I would be using Svelte most likely if I was targeting th that audience. I would use Svelte because again, Svelte has a more, a lower, a lower package size. It boils, it like it rent, compiles down to more basic JavaScript. It runs faster. Like I've, I've done quite a bit of research in it, but I like Vue.js because of its simplicity and I'm tar trying to target people that are just hobbyists. So again, my, my target audience is two of my friends, <laughs> essentially, like I, I would hope that they would try to see this and maybe use it at some point. That's really all I care about. Uh, so an of loop is fine on my end. Let's try it because I've never done it before. Uh, I have definitely seen this syntax, but I've just never used it myself. I always use the for each. So maybe promise I'll wait for, let me just see. Yeah, whatever. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I can always change it back to a for each if I need to. So uh, once you get the response, let's see, what do we want to do with that response? What we want to do is actually store it back into the monster if we can but that response what is that response let's take a look that response is in the results so in data so res dot so monster monster 
monster is equal to curious if that will work is that a crazy thing to do that might be a crazy thing to do but i am very curious if that'll work because what i want to do is i want to replace that element in the dnd response with the entire monster because from what i understand it the entire monster should have uh the results actually and i do need to put the results which i think i did right no data dot results so before i forget it's got to be dot results It does do an index, it does have a name, which is all I'm really using right now. So it shouldn't matter. Let's see. Let's see what happens. This might break, oh yeah, it broke. Monster is constant, right, obviously. Does that work? Okay, interesting. Uh, now what I really wanna see is what's actually happening and what's actually stored. So. One thing I have I didn't do last time is actually install the view dev tools because what it allows you to do if you haven't ever used them before add extension uh, to get all extensions and no, I don't really want to sync with this account if possible you just not detected yeah I know so let's refresh this page Vue.js is detected now and what we can do is go to view and we can view the actual elements that are associated. So DND response is still 322 objects, but yeah, it's still the same. So it's unfortunately did not do what I wanted it to do. So let's take a look at why. Now what we can do is see if this is running properly. So let's refresh. Okay, monster data results. So that's definitely not working. Response, data. Okay, so it's not, it's just response.data, right, because I was looking at the wrong API, so that's fine. Uh, so it's just response.data, so what if I were to do, I mean, my guess is this isn't going to work anyway, because if it would have worked, it would have screwed up my entire, all my code. Yeah, yeah, sorry. All good. Okay. Uh, view, let's again take a look at what we have in the DND response. It's the same thing, unfortunately, uh, but that's okay. We can we can work around this, it's not a big deal. So, just to make sure, I want to make sure that we are storing the correct elements. So, again, this is the I don't, I don't know if I should probably explain this a little bit. Uh, if people aren't familiar with Vue Dev or uh, JavaScript Dev Tools or Chrome Dev Tools. You can actually put breakpoints in your code, including with Vue, like a, re a framework. It all works perfectly fine. Uh, you just have to go into the Webpack folder, go into dot or source. Sometimes they have it, source. And as you can see in the Webpack folder, you already have your app.view. You have all your other components as well. So you have your monster. Like There's a bunch of monsters here that they shouldn't be, but you have to find the one that works. So... Yeah, so I've, that's what I did, app.view, that's what showed up here. And what it allows me to do is actually put breakpoints into my view code. All right, so let's do a refresh and make sure that, you know, something is happening. So monster is index URL name and res.data. So I was really hoping that it would replace it without me having to create a whole separate array for this. But it's looking like it's not going to. Although what I can do, what I can do is I can create a separate array. It's not a big deal. Uh, I can create a separate array temporarily. This.dnd response. Uh, let's just create something up here in the created. So let uh, let temp monsters equal just an array. And let's go and take a one we're doing here. What we want to do is instead of putting in a res data, what we want to do is we want to go temp monsters dot push, and we want to push res data to the temp monsters. Now, when we do that, what we want to do after this for loop runs is then make this dot 
d and d response equal to temp monsters. We'll see what happens. I'm just experimenting right now, so definitely want to take that off. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here forever. Okay, just doing something. Now, if we go back to view app and we take a look at D&D response, now we're talking. So now we have in each and every one of these, let me just pull this up a little bit. Maybe map instead of for of. Yeah, like like there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to iterate through arrays, hundred percent. And map is a really good option. Maybe I will take a look at that uh, a little bit later. But for now, I just want to kind of get it done. I think I think I have it. I have it here enough to kind of demonstrate the search at least and the expanded functionality like the showing here. So right now, what I can see is the D and D response now contains the full monster attributes. So all the information that the monster has in each and every one. So that means that right now what we can do is we can start showing information here, right? And let's do that. Let's show some more information, not just the name. So that for, for that, uh, if you took a look back in the previous stream, we created a monster.view component in this monster view component, that's where we're displaying the monster name because we're passing in a monster name string. So what we need to do now is pass in some more information into this monster view component. In fact, we can just pass in the entire monster into it and decide what to do with it later. That might not be the greatest way to do it um, because it's a little bit abstract and could be misinterpreted and you're passing in probably too much information. But yeah, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it uh, piece by piece, whatever I want to show. So I'm going to create another prop here that I'm going to type in. So monster type. Uh, no, it's react. Yeah, Alex, it, it is. It is reactive. The array is is reactive. So it's going to it's going to update whenever the like because I put I, I'm actually using it. As as a uh, as an array from here. So, okay, sorry. Another thing that I have to go through is I'm not actually using it directly here, right? So search result is what I'm displaying here. But as you can see in my computed property, so this runs whenever an, a value that you're looking at, in this case, it's, thing, it's the V bound search query, which is the variable that we're using to model the text box. So whatever you type into the text box, that's what we're basing this computer property on. And what I'm doing here is if that property, if that uh, search query is nothing, which actually, okay, it was a little bit late yesterday, last time I was doing it and I kind of did it really inefficiently. What I should do here is instead of running this every, like for, for no reason, when I'm updating the array, what I can do is if, uh, this dot search query is not equal to nothing, then I can run this. Right. Right. And if, since I, I don't really need to do an else because everything returns, what I can do is just remove all of this like that. So it should give me the same functionality, but then right now it's not going to just continually run these checks every time. So it might save me a little bit of performance. I don't know why I'm doing this again. <laughs> I choose my performance every once in a while, like for whatever reason, sometimes I'm like, okay, you know what? I need to optimize this for just for fun. Oh, okay have some problems with, uh, what do we have problems with? Monster type, right. I didn't finish writing this, so that's okay. Uh, what we have to do here is in here, we have to pass in monster dot type. Now, one issue I can see with this is it's not going to have a monster dot type right away. So, okay, let's actually, let's actually see how this, if this errors out or not. Uh, so in monsters, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to do monster type, also string. And again, I'm not going to be going through every single element of view in this. 
I don't know if people want me to like, do you want me to like, if, if you want me to go through an entire Vue.js tutorial step by step, I can do a separate set of live streams for that or even YouTube videos. But there's so many out there that I've done probably a much better job than I ever could. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't I just want to kind of go through and code this up without explaining every single little piece. So now that I've passed in this monster type, uh, and thanks, Alex, for the quick feedback, because it's exactly kind of what I'm looking for in this. I'm going to type in monster type, monster type. And what that should do is it should give us the type in our monsters. So yep, seems that the errors are gone. Yes, so we see that it does give us the type, but we're kind of boned in the element. Uh, one sec, let me just expand this out. Yeah, so what we want to do is focus a little bit on this uh, on this monster element. So what, what's going on here is we need flex direction column. So that's the first thing that we want to do, and that should solve a little bit of our problem. So now you can see it gives us the name and then right below it, the type name type. Uh, one little thing that I don't like is that the type is not capitalized here. The first letter is not capitalized. So I think we should fix that. Uh, capitalize view filter. So interestingly, these, uh, filters are actually going away from what I understand. And they were pretty useful. Um, I'm sure that there's a there's a good reason. I did actually learn like check out those that reason. And I thought it was relevant. But right now I can't remember what that is. I still kind of wish that they kept them because it's, it's a little bit convenient. So right now if I do this right, if I type in go to uh, monsters, add another element called filters, right? do that. And then I do monster type capitalize. It'll actually do it for me like every single anything that's typed in there, any any uh, like text that's there, it'll always capitalize the first letter. And this is something that Vue.js kind of provides right out of the box, Vue.js 2.0, at least. And you can even chain the filters. You can have multiple filters doing a bunch of different things. Um, I really technically ever only use it for capitalize, to be honest. And that's something that they, you know, they give you. You don't even have to write on your own. But yeah, whatever. I'm sure. I'm sure they have a good reason for removing it. They probably have a good replacement or something. I, I kind of believe in Evan Yu, the creator of Yu. So I, I'm not. I'm not one to kind of just flame him for no reason just because he's removing something. All right, let's get that going. So now let's get a little bit of a, a little bit of spacing here, maybe. Uh, monster name, monster type. Let's just dot monster type. Let's do margin 0.1 em up and down zero left and right. So that should help a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, that's fine, which we, we should really do. The other thing, the other kind of weird thing here is that dragons have a type of dragon, but the way I can solve this is I can probably just do type like this. And that might break it up just enough to kind of do that. To at least show what type, not just dragon. Okay, so now we have type. Um, the other, so that that's cool. And what we want to do is we want to be able to search by type as well. I don't know if I want to follow the stream to do list one step by step like this. Like, should I should I create this detailed view first and the animation, or should I expand my instant search? I kind of want to. Oh, colorizing types. Oh, by by the type would be really cool, actually. Yes, that is very true, and that would make it stand out a lot better. And that would require some sort of mapping as well, uh, which would be cool. So yeah, let's let's leave that for next stream. I think I will do that though. Let me just let me just write it just so I know for next stream. I like that idea. Just so I don't forget. 
colorize types based on the type. Good call. Uh, but to continue on here, I think I will expand the search because that's something that I wanted to do last time. Like I really wanted to be able to search multiple fields at once last time and I didn't get there. It's a little bit of a more complex thing and I wanted to, sh to, wanted to be able to do it. So what I want to do is split, split the value. So dot split by spaces. So every space will be a separate value. So then the value will be there. And index of, and I believe if I just put dot every, although that's probably not the case. Um, value or I don't think this is going to really work, but I'm going to try it. Monster dot type dot to lowercase dot index of value is greater than negative one. So I don't think it's going to be that easy, but anything is possible. So let's do beast. No, definitely not. Not that easy. What's the what's the error here in this tiny little console? Oh my! <laughs> I usually have this broken out into its own window, the con the the log, but this dot search query dot split is not a function. Ooh, okay. Uh, why not? Is it not split? Is that the wrong wording? JS dot split. Yeah, string dot split, right? String dot split. This dot search query, this dot search query dot split, right? I mean, I could do it here as well. Could be just an ordering issue. Let's take a look. No, definitely not. Uh, let's clear console here. No, okay. Was it really that issue? Okay. Okay, so we're kind of kind of there, but as you can see, it's not working exactly the way I wanted to. Shrieker, yeah, shrieker is fine. So what I want to do is be able to search by both at the same time. So yeah, we can search by uh, like the name and the type now. Not dragon's kind of a bad example because it has it always in the name. Uh, but so let's put like humanoid. Humanoid. Right. So then it shows you all the humanoids. But what I want to be able to do is then narrow down the search even more when I actually do a space. And right now it's totally not working with spaces. So something is going terribly wrong. Um, let's see here. So value is becoming, I think value, what happens is value becomes an array as soon as I do that of multiple things. And I have to go through that array instead of just the one filter. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking it is. And I probably have to do something with a dot every. So let me just take a look quickly at dot every JavaScript. Yeah, and because I can what I can do is I can go through a dot every um, hmm. So what I want to do actually, I'm wondering if I can again if I can debug this what I really like to do when I'm trying to think of something is I like to go through and step by step debug it as much as I possibly can. Sometimes it's doable, sometimes it's not. But right now I feel like I could probably do it. So let me take a look here. So not in created, what do we want to go into is computed. And what I want to see is what's happening. Oh God. 
Yep, yep, yep. What's happening when I type in a letter? So, reactive array is nothing, but value is A. Okay, that's fair. What if I put in a space? Value is, yeah, C become, value becomes an array and we, keep, we don't have any code to handle that. That's what I thought. So what we have to do is we have to be able to handle an array if, if value is an array, which makes sense. Um, but it, compli it complicates things for us because right now we have a very simple system. And right now, so this dot filter, right now what we have to do is break down value and run it on every value that, that is in the array instead of running it just once. So let me see here. I'm just going to comment that out for a second. Function monster, yes monster. So what we need to do now is value dot every Okay, so everything, every time in value. Every, is below threshold, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get some more information about every. That's not giving me anything. I mean, I guess I could just do a for each even, even easier. Scotch.io is actually a really great, a really great site. I love their blogs and their explanations. Let's see. So const is less than, that's what they're using. So they're using some sort of an array function. Um, let's do let's do a for each value dot for each for now. And then I might convert that to an every element. So then what we can do is return this. But instead of value, you're looking at element. Like so. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to find out live together, as is tradition. So let's see if basic functionality works, which it does not. So we know that it doesn't work. But it does also doesn't throw any errors. So let's just take a look at what, what's happening. not never hitting that is it hitting this stop nope not hitting that uh, okay so value is an array ha huh, yeah value dot for each it should go through this. So let me see here. Filter monster. And then inside of there, it should jump in, but it's not. So, you know what? Maybe it's, I think the, okay. So the problem is, is that we need to return to here. It's not returning to there. That's the biggest problem. A for each won't do it because you can't really return a for each. Like a double return. Uh, I don't know. Can you? Like, can you return this? It's not going to work, right? This is insane. Okay. It's definitely not working. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the troubleshooting of this together. Again, I believe it's just because we can't really use a for each for this. That's why I kind of lent like am thinking about going for the every because the every does return. Uh, okay. Let me see here. 
and it returns a result. The result, unfortunately, is just true or false, but I could probably use that without too much of a problem. All right. Because I can see if it does contain it or not. That's essentially that. That's essentially all I need to know is if, if the element contains it or not. If it does, then it returns true. Right. Let this react because the fil the filter will re return the entire thing. But what I needed to do is I needed to return not just the monster. I need I needed to return. Okay, so if I get every I'm not making sense I know I'm not making sense so what it'll do is it'll return what I need to do what I need to do is I need to make a conditionalized every and based on if it's this I need it to return Uh, let's see here. If just thinking, just thinking through this out loud. Right now, it's going through this filter project, filter process. The filter is a loop essentially that's going through and checking for a condition. The condition is uh, like before we did all this. These are the conditions, so it'll only return if it matches these conditions. Essentially, what I need to do is just return if it matches these conditions on every element on each on, on one or the other element it doesn't have to be both elements at the same time obviously uh, okay so that might work so I just need to get that might work on its own right yeah let's try that let's try that Because didn't every there's no errors, so that's good. But it never gets to that return element. So value, humanoid, and nothing. So it should search humanoid. It should break it down. Right. So it's going to go through every element and try to find humanoid. Yes, yes, I understand. Uh, Monster is there, yeah. But is it actually being passed in? What is... So yeah, I'm using element correctly there. I really want to know what's happening in here. <laughs> but it's looking like it's not going to let me do that for whatever reason. Right. Let's think here. Uh, let's see. Array dot every yeah is less than a hundred, and it'll only return if the entire array is less than a hundred. Right. That's that's how array, uh, how every works. It won't return, it'll return false if the array, if even one of the elements fails the array. So that's not exactly what we want. Or is it? No, it is kind of what we want. No. What about, I mean, this is kind of stupid. I'm just, put a return in front of every. Oh, shoot. That wasn't very smart of me. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. That was it. Good call, Alex. Nice job. Nice job. <laughs> I am a humanoid ass for uh, forgetting that return. Uh, okay. So that's that makes it a lot easier. So now again we can we can do multiple element search to a certain degree. Yeah, 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 Matt, laugh it up, laugh it up. So monstrosity, ooh, that's a cool one. 
And then if I want to go like all the M's in monstrosity. But again, so it, I'm still not still not exactly what I want. <laughs> so manticore, mantle. Yes, that's correct, but it's still a little bit janky. Uh, I might have to work on this a little bit offline. And 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 I guess yeah. You need and and. Maybe. Maybe that's that that is a good a good point. But I I was able to achieve this without the and and. I'll have to take a look uh, at what I did. It was a, it was about a month ago. Um and I've been doing a lot of other stuff since then, so that's why it's kind of flown from my mind as is tradition. But I think we've got I think we've got at least something working here. Adult, and I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time right now. Right off the bat, adult dragon. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Let me just do some more. Beast, nice. Camel, yeah, so it, it works to a certain degree. It works pretty well. I will need to, I will need to refine it. There's no doubt about that, but that's just the way it is. So now I can search by multiple fields. And I could probably add more fields as I go. Um, in fact, let's just try that and see what happens. I'm just curious how far I can go with this now. So let me just, let's see what else we can search by. Let's go to view. Let's take a look at our D&D object. So what was I thinking? I was thinking alignment, right? So maybe we'll search by, be able to search by alignment. Although that one might be a little bit complex because it has two two words in itself, but we'll see. Uh, so alignment, let's pass in alignment into monsters, shall we? Monster align. Monster.alignment, like that. Then in monster, we want to add another prop. It's a string, hanging comma, and save that, save that. Okay. Elements, did it work? What's going on? Oh, right. Okay. We actually have to do something with that align. Um, that's okay. Monster align. Alignment. Alignment. And let's go monster align like so. So okay, we're expanding these elements, but we're also not displaying any displaying anything probably because we're passing in the wrong element or something stupid like that. Uh, alignment, monster, align, monster, align. Let's just make sure that I spelt everything right. Monster, dot, uh, which I didn't, obviously. Yeah, chaotic evil. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit too too crazy in there. There's just too much stuff. <laughs> going on in these tiny little boxes. So we either have to expand the boxes, lower the font size, or something like that. But on that note, let's quickly do that. Shouldn't be too bad. These boxes were 140 width, 75 height. So let's do 100 height, 175 width. That should help a little bit. And the other thing that I wanna do Let's just quickly take a look at what that looks like. Looks better, still shit, but better. Uh, those boxes are too small for the amount of box shadow, in my opinion. Fair enough, that is also true. The, the box shadow is a little bit intense on them. Uh, I could definitely take the box shadow down a little bit. Can't remember what box shadow generator I was using, but shadow generator, I'm sure I can find one. Again, I believe it was this one. Although, no, I don't think, I think this one was the one that I didn't like. 
no, that one was the one I didn't like. Maybe try it. Let's try a different one. Let's try to get. Let's try to narrow down this box shadow a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah, that one's not bad. So opacity is fine. No thanks. Let's just do a tiny bit of box shadow. Let's do this. We're not looking for backwards compatibility here. I don't really care. Box shadow. Max out those boxes. Could you have just the name of the monster in the box and when you hover over it gives you all the other information? So uh, SFX call the thing that I, one thing that I want to do is I want to be able to search by multiple terms. So that's why I kind of want to have showing more than just the name. Um, but I, I am going to limit it to at least to one or two of them. And when you click on it, I want to have a little bit of an anima animation going where it expands the box and gives you all the other information like the additional attributes and stuff like that. So I am going to kind of do what you're, what you're saying, but it's going to be more of a, it's going to, it's going to show more initially because again, I need to show a little bit more for the search for the search aspect of it. Now, obviously you can search without showing anything, but I feel like right now, especially when I'm demonstrating again, I'm not creating this app for anyone to actually use and be useful right off the bat. Um, I'm creating this more of a learning experience for myself and hopefully a learning experience out there for how I go about doing everything. And maybe you can take some useful tips and tricks that I use and apply it in your own development or not. If you think it's a little bit convoluted, that's fine too. So if I just search for, actually, we haven't added it to the search. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So where's our search app? That's where it is. So what we want to do is we want to be able to search by not just the type, but, and not just the name, but the alignment. And for that, we need alignment to lowercase index of element. Okay. And again, I believe I'll have to do a little bit, a little bit of fandangling here, like get it a little bit better because I believe it's only searching by like the first element in the array and it, it kind of screws up on the, uh, on the uh, spaces, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So uh, if I want to search by chaotic, yep, chaotic, good. Okay, so it does, it, it can do that. Dragons, okay. And then the name, okay, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty advanced search right there. <laughs> uh, it works decently well. Again, I think there is a little bit of a glitch to it that I'll have to narrow down, but at least it's there. And I think it is kind of useful, again, for someone, for a DM out there that is running a campaign and needs to think of monsters real quick that doesn't have them on hand. This might be a way for them to actually go in and quickly, you know, quickly be able to look up the monster that they need. Now, I think they would need more information, and I don't know that information. So, again, in the next stream, I'm going to have a couple people on, a couple of my friends that actually do DM I uh, do our dungeon masters and I want to go through the feedback process with a client. So kind of like I've got something for them here. I want to show them that and hopefully they can give me enough feedback that I can make this better at an early stage before I, you know, invest a lot of time into it. It's just a demonstration purpose. I'm not trying to make a product that I'm going to be selling, nothing like that. I just want to show that process of gaining feedback early on in a project, taking that feedback and actually creating something better with it. Instead of, you know, putting your head down, creating your own idea of what the project should be without asking your target market. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, that's the that's a lesson that I want people to learn from this. Um, that's where I'm going to go. So it's 922. I've been streaming for an hour. I kind of wanted to do a short stream today. I didn't get through everything, obviously, on my stream to do. Uh, I did want to deploy to Netlify. That's something I could do, I guess, right now. But I did add more attributes to instant search. And I did display more monster attributes at least. So I got two out of the out of the five things done. Uh, I think I might do another short stream, maybe tomorrow, maybe on Wednesday. And then another longer stream probably with more people later on during the week. So I think, but I think that's it for this stream. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Any questions before I take off? 
Uh, any feedback would be great right now because again, this is only my second stream ever. Um, and you know, HTML, all the things has been around for a little while now. We do a podcast. Uh, you can find us on any podcast app if you're just tuning in through uh, without knowing that we are a podcast. That's essentially like where we where this all started. Um, it's HTML, all the things, just like our Twitch username. You can check us out there. Uh, we also have a Twitter, HTML, everything, Instagram, HTML, all the things. Check us out on all the socials and. I will definitely, definitely be doing uh, more streams like this. I kind of enjoy it. I enjoyed the feedback. Thanks a lot for everyone in the chat. They were like extremely helpful. I mean, they helped me solve a couple problems even. So that's awesome. And uh, yeah, no, S SFX call. Um, thank you. Uh, it's been it's been great get, getting the feedback from you. So appreciate appreciate it, uh, and stay tuned for more. Bye everyone.